God. The river that carries life. And that is so wonderful to know that God is a God that does not only want to give us life to us alone, but God wants our life to give life to others. This morning, even if I, before I go into the Word, I just feel the Lord is speaking to me to share something with you. That as you know, when you enter into God's promises and God's purposes in life, the enemy doesn't sit back and let you just take a joyride in the Holy Ghost. As I shared last week with you, that when you are about to go after God's purpose and plan, the enemy will come to you and start trying to stop you and hinder you and throw rocks before your feet and hinder you where you want to go. And as we've been sharing for the last few weeks, how are we going to build this church to be a church of without, the, without walls and without, the, with, without any hindrance for God's glory. As we share that this church is going to be a church that is going to go about beyond the walls of this house. And we're going to be reaching out to every man and every woman that is out there. We're going to be a church that has vision and a purpose. We're going to be a church that is going to touch the lives of people. And guess what the enemy does suddenly? He says, you think so. You think there's going to be a red carpet for you? I don't think so. And I just want to share this with you. Not that I am, I am upset or I am hurting, but I want, you to, I want you to ask you this morning, can you cover me in prayer? Because I was, I was being under attack the whole entire week last week. Because the enemy does not like to see God doing mighty works amongst us. And the enemy comes and tries to attack me and do things in my life. And I rejoice like Paul. I rejoice. I count all things joy. And I know that what the enemy is trying to do, he's trying to destroy me, to discourage me, and get, get, keep my mouth shut but I'm asking you this morning can you can you cover me throughout this week can you pray for me can you ask God's covering over my life because I need God's covering over my life as we're pushing forward as a church believe me the enemy is not going to sit back and try to allow us to go forward the way he wants to go uh, God wants us to go forward but I just had to share this this morning this is not part of my sermon but God just laid out my heart to share it with you and, and if you, I don't, I'm sure that you have gone through your trials and your problems throughout this week, and I'll cover you in prayers as well. I will pray with you as well, because the enemy is not going to see you wanting to do great things for God either. But he is not in control of your life, but God is only in control of your life. Amen? Amen. Ezekiel had, they had a vision from God during the time of the captivity of Israel in Babylon. He had been a priest, but during the time of Babylonian captivity, became a prophet, a message of hope and restoration for Israel. God gave Ezekiel a vision of waters flowing out from under the threshold of the doors of the holy temple of God, and these waters became rivers. Ezekiel 41, 7, uh, 47, 1 says, Tell tells us that the source of the river came from the sanctuary of God. In the Old Testament, the sanctuary was a physical temple of God. However, God has moved himself out of a physical temple, and he has moved himself into a spiritual temple, into a body that we call Jesus, the body of Jesus Christ. He has moved his spirit from the holies of holies, and he has imparted himself in you and I. Today, the, the source of the river is in you and I. The source of the river that brings life unto others is in you and I. And God God is speaking to each of any, every one of us. He's saying, you are the river of life. You are the one that God wants to flow through you. The Bible says that our body is a holy temple for God's glory. And we are to let him do all things that he desires to do. We become that source, the river, that God can show forth his glory through us. And he wants to flow through us. The river must flow uh, not only out of us, but it has to be gushing out of us. It has to come with power. It has to come with might through us. That as we're going forward in our spiritual world, in order that that water to bring healing the Holy Spirit has to be in control of that water it cannot be a water that we create we cannot create our own water we are not in power of creating waters we are not in power of creating any rivers rivers are created by God and God has to only create that river in our lives but how can that river cre be created in our lives how can this river give us life and give us more power we can't stop the Holy Spirit but the Holy Spirit will control us and tell us where to go and where not to go and the prime example takes place in Matthew chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, and jumping down to verse 4, chapter 4. Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 reads as follows. He says, And when Jesus was baptized, he went up on once out of the water, and behold, the heavens were open, and John and, and he, John, saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove on, uh, on him. 
And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved son, who I am delighted. And then verse 4 goes on and says, Then Jesus was led, guided by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness, a desert to be tempted and tested and tried by the devil. So here it is, God descending his own spirit upon his own son, who is the living water, who said, if I give you a water to drink, you will not thirst anymore. And here he is, that the Holy Spirit, instead of having a Holy Ghost time, instead of having a joy and a shout, he leads him right into temptation. The Holy Spirit leads Jesus to be tempted by the devil. And so many times we think that the Holy Spirit does not lead us into areas of danger. But the very fact that he's leading us into areas of danger, he wants to prepare us, he wants to build us, he wants to show us that we can give life where is death. That's why the devil could speak. That's why the, the devil spoke to the Jesus. Jesus could speak back to him and say, listen to me. You want to bring death? I'm bringing back life. Wherever you want me to test my God, I'm going to not test my God, but say that my God is sovereign regardless of what. And that is what's taking place in many people's life. Many times, the enemy brings us to a point of temptation, and we call it demonic. But I want to declare unto you this morning that not everything that happens to you is demonic. Not every time that you go trial, through tri trials and temptations is demonic. Because God allows you to go through those things, because God wants to strengthen you. And we need to stop giving the devil so much credit and give God more credit. We have to thank God for our trials and tribulations. That's why Paul says, I rejoice at all times. No matter what goes on, I will rejoice because I count all things to joy because they're going to strengthen me. They're going to build me up. Ezekiel was shown this river and he was also led by the angel out the, from the temple into the river. First the water was up to his ankles, then he walked into deeper rivers, and then the water came up to his waist, and eventually it was too deep for him to walk in the river, and he had to swim. As the river flows, it does not get wide and widen. Instead, as it flows, it cuts deeper and deeper into the land. Watch a flow of a river. A river never goes wider and wider. It keeps on cutting deeper and deeper, and it's, it sustains itself, it strengthens itself. And as it goes deeper, it, it makes himself more stronger, because it, as it, deeper it goes, the more the flow goes the faster and harder down, the, uh, down the, the valley and wherever it goes. God wants us to become deeper and deeper in him, that no longer we will be in control of our lives, but he will become in control of our lives. When we are a river for God, we will become deep in him, and we will walk in the depths of God's glory. But when we, are, we want to get wider and wider, and so many times we want to enlarge our territories, but the enlargement of our territories shouldn't be in the width. Our enlargement of our territories should be in depth. Because when we get deeper in God, there is nothing that can stop us because now we are the crowd. Because when you're walking with God, you're a crowd. Because when you, you don't need 100,000 people with you, you don't need 300 people with you, you don't need even 20 people with you. You just need God. Wherever you show up with God, you're the crowd. And you got the victory. You got the victory at all times. And that's what we need to de desire for. So many times we're looking who is with us and who is not with us. Church, let us not look who is with us and who is not with us. Let's look who is already in us. Jesus Christ is already in us. And we are victorious through the blood of the Lamb. So when we are victorious through the blood of the Lamb, so we can, nothing can hold us back and nothing can bring condemnation against us. That's why Jesus could walk in the desert and he could face his enemies and he could still look at them and speak peace and be still unto them. The storm could not rage against Jesus because Jesus says, I am the Lord of the storm. The Lord of the storm is in your life. Even though it rises up, you can still say, greater is he who is in me than who is in this world. We sang a song this morning, greater is he who is in me than who is in this world. But let us truly and truly not only sing this song, but let us live it because nothing and absolutely nothing can come against those who love God and those who want to serve him in the spirit and in truth. Because of the deep rivers, we can no longer walk by sight, but we have to swim by faith. That's why the scripture says, those who wait upon the Lord shall mount their wings like an eagle. It means no longer you are in control, but that wind flow controls the eagle. 
The eagle no longer flaps its wings where he wants to go, but he goes with the turmoil flow of the, of the winds that is out there. He looks where is the turmoil flow, and he goes on the turmoil flow, and he keeps on flying across the, the land because he is not in control, but the turmoil flow is taking him where he, where, he, where, wherever he wants to go. That eagle looks at the turmoil flow, and if he wants to go higher, he goes on a, on a, on a, on a one that is shooting him up, up even higher and to greater heights. That is what we need to do. We need to look on the waves that God creates and stop creating waves of our own. We see too many times we create waves of our own to get excited about lives. And unfortunately, that is not what God has called us to do. Too many times we want to create things to say, oh, I did a good deed for God. But you will hear me saying this over and over and over again. I do not want to do any good work. I want to do a God work. Because a God work is victorious. But a good work is always going to fail. I don't want to walk in, I don't want to walk in boldness of arrogance. But I want to walk in boldness of humility. It's a big difference. Big difference between those two boldness. Uh, boldness. Sometimes people think of being bold means to be arrogant. To means to give a shout. To go and hold somebody by throat and saying, well, the kingdom was taken by violence and, the vi and so we're going to take it back with violence. No. Jesus says, if you go somewhere and they do not receive you, shake the very dust off your feet and walk in peace. Let the testimony of your dust of your feet be against that household. He's talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ's peace, not a, a, a gospel of warfare. That's why we can't go to places and speak peace and be still. That's why we can go and God gives us authority to walk into dark places, into the enemy's camp, and walk with the joy of the Holy Ghost. The depth and the substance that God wants to build us in is not the width and the material wealth. Church, please understand, the material wealth that God gives us and the things that we possess in this world are just the byproduct of how we walk in depth in God. The way you walk in God on a daily basis it will show the byproduct. God says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. So if you think, you see things being added unto you, it's because you're seeking his righteousness, his kingdom, and his will. That's why things being added unto you. But if you're seeking to be added unto, you will not seek the kingdom of heaven. And you will not see the kingdom of heaven. We have strength that we can possess wealth on our own. We have smarts that we can do all those things. But unfortunately, when we get sick and we get ill, our strength is gone, and we get old, who is there to give us that added on stuff? We need him. I, I know that we need him. I was in a place that I was in a car accident a few years ago, and the moment that I was in a car accident, all my strength and all my power that I had to make money was gone. And if I did not have my dependency on God, I would be on the streets the next week or next month, because all the bills will come in. But God says, you know what, you have faith in me, I will take care of you. So many times, we don't even know people, the, how they operate in God, and we always think, oh, because they're not doing what we're doing, or how they operate, how they're, they're, not, they're not the way we desire them to be Christian-like, they're not walking in the Spirit of God. And I do not want to put my brother on spot, but I'm glad to see him this morning. But Neil is one of the greatest men that i ever known in my life. He is a very quiet man. But he is one of the most generous men that I've ever met. He is quiet, but he serves. He does everything in the background of the doors. Nobody knows what he's doing in the background. Nobody knows what he's doing behind closed doors. And many people might even think that he's not doing anything. But it's God that knows that he's doing all things. That's why God allows him to go from glory to glory. He opens opportunity for opportunity for him. God says, Neil, I know your heart very what you're seeking. That's why I'm giving it to you. Because you're seeking my kingdom first. You're, you're seeking to serve me. You're not seeking for anybody to give you any sort of glory. And I've shared that before with, with, with him. Because that is the man that he is. And God will bless those kind of people. God will take care of those people. Because their depth is in God. Not what people think about them. And I love people who don't think, get, care what people think about them. And do what God asks them to do. They don't think about who to please. But they want to just please the, the mighty God. And that is, the, that is the kind of God that we're serving. He says, if you believe in me and your depth is in me, we are the crowd. And we will defeat any man and every woman, any, any, any principality that wants to rise up against us. As the river flows, there will be obstacles and there will be hindrances that wants to prevent the river from flowing on, uh, uh, in your life. When the river stops flowing, it becomes like a lake. And then from the lake becomes a swamp. And from a swamp becomes a pond. 
these dead seas is no good to anyone as the water is too salty for any use. It cannot be used for, any, uh, for drinking. It cannot be used to provide nutrition for growth of plant or food. It is basically useless. In our lives, we must be aware of swamps and ponds that will hinder our personal relationship with God. The swamps and the ponds prevent the power of the Holy Spirit flowing through us and to others. When these swamps and the ponds are built up over time, nothing living can grow in it. When we walk from, away from God or refuse to listen to the work of the Holy Spirit, we become like those swamps and the ponds. That's why Ezekiel saw the vision. He saw that the rivers will go into the cities. Wherever it goes, it will bring healing. Not only will it bring healing, it also brings nutrition to the trees. And it says those trees that are planted by those rivers will never weather their leaves. They will be always green. And they will bring fruit, not only for themselves, but they will bring fruit for everybody that comes by them and food to partake. When I found this picture on the internet, I said, yes, God, this is who we're going to be. We're going to be like this tree, oh God. Yes, we're going to be like this tree, like a living tree, oh God, that when people are passing by us, oh God, they will be partakers of our fruit, oh God. They're going to have life. They're going to become green, oh God. As, they believe, as they're passing by you and I, they will t they feel the presence of God, and they say, oh, I was so depressed, but uh, there was something about this woman. There was something about this man. As I walked by them, the Spirit of God just touched me. Something happened to me. I'm no longer depressed. I'm no longer uh, suicidal. I'm no longer in need of anything because something just touched, touched me because we are in depth in God. We are, we are deep in God and God is allowing people to be blessed because we are blessed in Him. That is what God is asking us to be. Blessed in Him so we can be a blessing to others. God doesn't want us to be blessed for our own sake but God wants us to bless to be a blessing to someone else. Whenever you receive something, don't think it's for you. It's to share with others. Whenever you receive anything from God, God trusts you that you will become a good steward for his kingdom to, to, to give on to others that need uh, of that fruit that he has given you. There is power in the flow of the river. The force of the river brings life. The amount of the flow depends on how much we are willing to allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. There must be also not only life in us, but there needs to be a power source that is going through us. I know that I can, I, that, that it's not a popular message to speak any longer in these days. But I think as a church, we need to speak it more and more often. We need to talk about the Holy Ghost. We need to talk about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I believe that the river of life is in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the one that flows through us. The Holy Ghost is the one that carries us from glory to glory. And we need to have the baptism of Holy Ghost. I encourage each and every one of you in this house, if you do not have the Holy Ghost, you don't have the baptism of Holy Ghost, please seek it. It is vital to your life. It is vital to the force that God wants to give you. It is the dunamis power that God promised on the day of Pentecost. He did not say you have to meet certain criteria to receive the Holy Ghost. He says all you need to do is declare that Jesus Christ is the Lord of your life, and receive the free gift of the Holy Ghost. It is free. It doesn't cost anything. It doesn't have any prerequisite. You don't need to have any prerequisite like the world is asking you to have. God is saying, just seek and I will give it to you. And I want you, my brothers and sisters, be empowered in the Holy Ghost. I want you to be walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. Because there's no other way to fulfill the, the, the commission that God has given us without the Holy Ghost. When we walk with God, our lives will become fruitful. As we, as not only as a good work, but through our good works, it will become food for spiritual growth for others, to be helped, to be encouraged. We, come, we become a medicine to a world that is ill and needs healing. We become that helping hand and that listening ear and that shoulder that people can come and cry upon. We are dealing with a world that has no vision. We're dealing with a world that is lost and is dark. We're dealing with a world that is looking for a shoulder to cry, an ear to hear, someone to come and tell them, I love you. I heard a, I heard a sister sharing with me yesterday. I was meeting with someone, um, and this person told me, he says, uh, I just want to give God the glory. Because every time I share the story of my life with anybody about my son, Everybody always tried to put my son down. Say, oh, your son is going through this problem and that. He's rebellious. He's not listening to God. Ba, 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 ba. You know all those things that people say. But she says, as soon as I came to you and you, I told you, the moment I told you my son is dealing with drinking and so forth and so on, all you did say, sister, is enough. Let's pray. 
Let's declare your son into the kingdom. Let's seek him that he will stop drinking. And she says, praise the Lord. I was looking for you. I was looking for you for weeks. But I couldn't find you or find your phone number. I'm glad that I saw you today on the street. But I want to tell you, praise the Lord. My son not only is not drinking, but he has, part, he, has, he has removed those friends and the circle of friends that he had. And no longer is he partaking of, a, he was part of a cult that he was they doing witchcraft. He says he's no longer part of that either. He's coming home and he's saying to me, Mom, I want to know about Christ. I want to know about him. So let us not become that source of judgment, but become the source of life. When someone tells us about their struggles, let us pray for them. Let us lay hands. We are the river of life. God has removed himself. Ezekiel saw the Spirit of God leave the temple of, uh, of uh, Solomon. And he says, I saw the Spirit of God living. But he says there is a coming that is coming back. But he says it's not coming on a natural temple. It's coming in a supernatural temple, which is you and I. And the Spirit of God has descended on you and I, church, and we will go in the power of the might of God. But if we are not, we need to know that we are no longer a dead sea, but we are the source of a, uh, uh, of a living sea. We no longer will be lacking in our, way, uh, our ways of giving life, but will become a channel of God to speak positive words into others. God has positioned us where we become a channel that the river of life will flow through us. And bring life to others. We need to ask ourselves this morning, how full is my river? And how deep is my river in God? If you have not allowed the Holy Spirit to take control of your life, I encourage you this morning, please let him take control of your life. It's never too late to allow the flow of the Holy Spirit be in charge of everything that you do and I do. Church, we need the Holy Spirit more than ever before. We need the living water to flow through us every day. I thank God for the past experiences. As we heard even this morning, Simone was sharing, I thank God for the revivals that is happening in Africa, in the Caribbean, in China. I thank God for them. But we want our own revival. We want our own experience with God. We want our own powerhouse in this place. We want Metro Vancouver to be set on fire for God's glory. That's what I'm desiring for. I don't care what happened in the past. We can sit down in here talk about what happened in Azusa Street. And we can be still thinking about, oh, what a glorious time was in Azusa Street as the Holy Ghost came down and had the Azusa Street revival. Oh, what a wonderful time it was there. Well, that was for then. What about today? We need another Azusa Street. We need another move of God. We need another revival taking place. We need people to come from all around the world and say there is a mighty power of God moving in Metro Vancouver that we can be healed. We can be set free. People walk from all distance to hear what God had to say on Azusa Street. We're still celebrating Azusa Street 100 years after. We're still celebrating a past experience with God in order of uh, uh, celebrating a new experience in God. We have to experience God's newness every day. He says he will give us a new song all day long. Every day is a new song in his kingdom. I thank God this morning that we're no longer going to be in the former reign, but we're going to be in the latter reign. Oh God, how we need you to shower us with your glory. Oh, how God, we need you to pre- show us your presence and take us away in your glorious ways, oh God. This morning, I know that my message is short, but I do believe that God wants to do some mighty work in us. I know that this morning, it's not about so much what I have to say, but it's about what He has to say. God wants to speak to you. God wants to speak to me. God wants to speak to each of us, not only today, but every day. But let this today be our start, church. Let today be the beginning of everything that we do and say in His kingdom. Let us seek him this morning for deeper depths and higher heights. Let us seek him today in a way that we never sought him before. That's why I was sharing with you. As I was meditating this week, the Lord told me, this Monday night, I don't want you guys to get together for prayer. This Monday night, I want you to have prayer, closet prayer time. I want you to have individual time. Because God wants to cause you to go deeper and deeper in him. God wants to speak things to you that you have never heard before. I believe that God wants to give you visions and dreams that you have never seen before. God wants to give you revelations that you have never heard before. 
But I believe that with all my heart. And I know that the last three weeks, God has been setting us up with that. God has brought a word to us uh, three weeks ago with an anointed vision for this house. Then God brought us another word last week. And this week, he wants to speak to us in power and might. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, 20 minutes message, is that enough for your church? God says, you decrease and I will increase. And I said, God, thank you. That's all we need. So can we go before the Lord this morning, church? Can we just spend some alone time before him?